Oh, you f If you're trying to remove a steel brake bleed nipple from an aluminium caliper, don't make the mistake I just did. This video shows you how you can do, use a magnetic induction torch to get out those seized brake bleed nipples without snapping them off. If you have been stupid enough like me or unfortunate enough to snap off a brake bleed nipple, this video shows you how to drill one out. Or in fact, it shows you how not to drill one out. And if you make a mistake drilling it out, how to recover from that mistake. The brake bleed nipples on this Mercedes R230 SL55 are steel and the caliper, as you can see here with this magnet, is aluminium. So if you start using a map torch or an oxyacetylene torch on an aluminium caliper, this is going to absorb all the heat very quickly and it's going to potentially warp. At very best, you're just going to strip off all the lacquer. At worst, you're going to damage the caliper and the seals inside it. Now, if you do need to use heat on an aluminium caliper, my advice would be to use a magnetic induction coil like this. And the idea is that you just put this around the bleed nipple for a few seconds, heat the bleed nipple up, um, that doesn't actually damage the lacquer in any way or damage the caliper in any way. You can also try using a heat gun, but in my experience, that doesn't work quite as well. Have a go at getting out this seized brake bleed nipple. It hasn't snapped off yet, but the nut is completely rounded and we can't use a brake line spanner on there. So we're going to use one of these fluted um, devices here to try and wind that off. But before we shear that off, we're going to give it a go heating it with the induction coil here to see if a bit of heat might free that up. I'm heating that with the induction rod about three or four times. We gave it a quick blast with a impact wrench and I think either that's about to snap off or we're about to get that out after however many days of trying. Whoa, success! Look at that. Wow, if only I'd known about that hot induction rod before I snapped off that brake bleed nipple, which I still haven't fixed. The secret to getting that seized brake bleed nipple out was to heat it using the hot rod induction rod and then to give it a quick blast with um, the Devolt impact wrench. And that knocking effect obviously helped loosen the rust as well as the heat. Good chance that your brake bleed nipples will be rounded off, in which case these fluted um, bolt extractors work really well. And that's how we got that brake bleed nipple out in the end. If you just try and wind it out with a hand wrench, because you're not giving even torque, you're more likely to shear the thing off. Give it a blast with an impact driver, which is basically um, going straight down and then wind it out with one of these. We're going to attempt to drill out this brake bleed nipple um, because every other thing we've tried has failed and boy have we tried some techniques. Now my advice is before you try drilling out that brake bleed nipple go along to Mercedes or wherever you want to buy your brake bleed nipple from and actually buy a new one so you can see exactly how deep it is before you start hitting this taper because when you're drilling this out you do not want to drill beyond the threads otherwise you risk damaging the caliper and then you really are in trouble this here is the part number for an sl55 i'm sure it's the same for standard sl500 they come in pairs and they come with the rubber cap and they're about 10 pounds for two of them the second bit of advice I would give you is I would be very, very, very wary about trying to use an easy out to get one of these screws out. When you've got steel into aluminium, it's almost like the two metals are welded together. And in my experience, these things break more often than they're useful. If you are going to use an easy out, um, use this style of easy out and what we've done is drilled a bigger hole to accommodate a bigger easy out and gone one stage further and actually cut the top off with an angle grinder because you don't want that to the bottom out. The thing I would advise um, if you are using easy outs get yourself one of these here or make yourself one of these rather than trying to use um, just a set of mole grips on there because you're not getting even pressure and you're more likely just to wedge the thing further in so if you are going to use an easy out get the proper tools to do it don't tap the thing in once again you're more likely to shatter it than do anything else now in our particular case we're going to use a set of um, reverse 
drill bits. These basically work backwards and sometimes the heat that's generated when you're drilling will be enough to break that rust and sometimes as you step up the drills and you get closer to the edge of the sheared bolt it'll actually wind itself out. That's what I'm hoping because we've pretty much tried everything else. Um, just before you start, my advice would be to get an old bit of aluminium, etc., and drill a few test holes to make sure that you do not go any bigger than the brake bleed nipple. This is an M10 um, one mil thread, so it's a fine thread. So you'll also need to, if you're recutting the threads, you'll need to get a specific or custom set of now, taps. A great company in Bristol called Avon Tap and Die that sell these sets here for about £20. This is an M10 one mil. Uh, fine thread tap set. Now you'll notice that these taps are all different. These are slightly tapered at the end and this kind of style of tap here is not going to be any good to you for drilling out brake bleed nipples because the taper is going to hit the bottom of your hole long before you start cutting threads. So you're going to need a tap like this where the cutting ability starts at the top here and not halfway down so this is a stepped set here we're going to be using the end tap here Sealy left hand spiral drill set goes up to 8.7 mil which is this one here we're going to drill a test hole first and then tap it just to make sure that we've got the right size drill bits for this job the see of that 8.7 mil hole ideally it should be a 9 mil hole is going to allow us to use this uh, tap here now in this particular test case we're using the tapered to tap okay I'm hoping that that will now be perfect for our bleeding just test that we've cut the threads correctly we've got the right taps which we have so it now just remains to be seen if we can drill the remainder of our um, snapped off bolt in the caliper without damaging the bottom of the calendar caliper well the reverse thread sorry left hand drill bit did not get that out so we're now on to the nuclear option of trying to um, use the taps to actually re-thread that I'm just going to get the magnet on there to catch any filings never had so much trouble getting out a Cutting this evenly at all, unfortunately. Well, you can just start to see the edge of that rust being revealed. So maybe the last tap will do the job. This is just about our last option here. If this doesn't work, I'm a bit short of options. Come on, that must surely be. If you would try to weld this, you couldn't have done a better job. I can safely say I've never had so much trouble getting a bleed nipple or bolt out. I'll be so careful doing this. I can just see the first signs of the actual caliper just there. So this bit in there is just the bottom of the um, old bleed nipple. The threads are so... After days of battling, I think I may just about have got this thing out. Oh my goodness, and there it is. Well, that was the biggest battle I think I've practically ever had on a Mercedes. Well, the good news is we managed to get that old bleed nipple out without damaging the seat. Unfortunately, the threads on this caliper are knackered. And what we're gonna have to do is drill that hole out wider and screw in a helicoil, which is an M10 one mil helicoil, and then screw that into the helicoil. The tap which came with our helicoil set is no good for our purposes because it's tapered. So what we've done is we've gone along to Avon Tap and Die and bought a set of M12 times one taps. And in that set is a tap with cutting threads all the way to the bottom, which is what we need. This style of tap is fine if you're tapping all the way through something, it doesn't make any difference. But when you're tapping 
um, a hole like that where you need to be threaded all the way to the bottom. You need to have th cut threads all the way to the bottom. We've done a test hole um, with our cutters and everything works fine. We bought the right size. You could potentially save yourself money because a set of these is 45 pounds. Put that in perspective, this M10 one was 20 pounds. This is over twice as much, so quite a specialist set. You could potentially just cut the top off here with an angle grinder, but it's very difficult to get a straight cut. I'm not sure if these are hardened either. Plus, um, we're only gonna get one chance at this. If we put that tap in there and mess up the threads, then that's it, it's over, we're up for a new caliper. We may still have messed up the threads, but at least, for a 700 pound caliper, I'm prepared to spend an extra 45 pounds to try and save it. So let's see if we can tap that hole with this and see how we get mask off the drill bit because we do not want to drill into the seat under any circumstances. Put a magnet on the drill to catch any filings and see how we go. Once again, we're masking off the tap. We're gonna use a drill, a high torque drill on very slow speed to do this. Uh, we could use this tool here, but it's just catching the top of the caliper. Here goes. This is a 700 pound caliper. If I mess this up, going at an angle, it's all over. I don't think that went in straight. I don't think we've cut that straight. We're going to try and put a helicoil in, but I'm not holding out much hope. Well, we've wound the helicoil in there and it's gone all the way down. I think just looking at that helicoil the threads don't look even to me don't know how well you can see that and I think what will happen is when we try to put in our brake bleed nipple it'll bind and not go in straight well that's gone in there straight and that's quite tight now now obviously I don't want to <laughs> shear off this brake bleed nipple I suppose what we have to do is to see if we pump brake fluid through what happens, whether it comes out of there or not. The problem we've got with this helicoil is as we tighten the bleed nipple down, the helicoil is winding out and it's also leaking, probably because it is winding out. So that solution is not gonna work for us. You could potentially glue the helicoil in with Loctite Red um, pretty permanent solution, but the way helicoils work, that's not ideal because as you screw into a helicoil, the spring expands slightly. So we're not going to be gluing that helicoil in. We're going to go for plan D or E, whichever we're up to. So in the context of repairing a brake bleed nipple, this strategy here may work better than helicoils. These are, um, they're kind of called time certs. Now, they're not a time cert kit from Worth. It's actually a spark plug thread repair kit, 10 times one, and they're not expensive. They're only about five or six pounds, and you get four of these little things here, all different lengths, and they will screw in to our um, M12 one hole that we've cut. And because these are not springs, these are um, sort of much tougher we should be able to tighten that bleed nipple down sufficiently so it doesn't leak anymore. So as I say, these will just screw in to the thread and what we would do to wind them in is just use a spare male fitting from a brake bleed line, which is a 10 times one, and that will allow us to wind that in. Now, if we do go for this option, what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue that insert in and that has a lip on the top there, you can see which will hopefully allow that not to leak. Just before we go gluing things into our caliper, um, they do actually make an M12 one brake bleed nickel. We got one from these guys here, procalipers.co.uk. So it may be that this actually screws into our M12 one hole that we've drilled and does the job without us having to put in any insert. So another day, hopefully another solution. Let's wind this out and pull out that ineffective helicoil. Fortunately, we will get covered with brake fluid yet again, but so be it. Very easy to get splashed with brake fluid when you're doing this, so make sure you've got goggles on. It's really important that when you've drilled this out that you haven't left any swath inside there. Ideally, what you want to do is 
take the caliper off and blow it out with an air way of stopping filings and swath falling into your caliper when you're drilling is to use one of these little nails from a cable tie that will fit perfectly inside the hole like that and then you can blow out the shavings which will be mag um, aluminium and you can get the nail out with a magnet I should be using gloves for this because I'm getting brake fluid all over my hands which is never good Tighten that brake bleed nipple down and I can see we're still leaking brake fluid. Now the way the bleed nipple seals is on this surface here, the conical face. It doesn't seal on the threads. So this is how a bleed nipple would sit normally, sealing here and here. And this is the caliper, the fluid coming up through the caliper. If you have drilled, this is an extreme example, but if you've drilled that hole at an angle and you then wind a bleed nipple in, the bleed nipple is not sealing on that surface. And what happens is the brake fluid goes up through this gap and then up through the threads. I obviously haven't tapped that hole straight, so there's no point in trying to put an insert in, so we're gonna to have to go for plan F. It's another day and another plan, and I think this will be our last chance. This here is a special fitting, an M12 one thread fitting that screws into the hole that we've drilled um, and has its own seat inside it, okay? so. We don't have to worry about our damaged conical seat because this one has a perfect one. Now, the only problem is we're going to have to glue this in and make sure that there is no swath. The hole that we've got at the moment is not quite deep enough to, to um, encompass all these threads. Even though this comes with an aluminium crush washer, it's not sealing. So we're going to have to dry that out. And in order to do that, we are going to have to disconnect our fitting here, which I really didn't want to do because once you've and made a fitting like that. You're not supposed to disconnect it. And then we're gonna cap the pipe off there. We're gonna cap that off is with a brake union fitting screwed to the top there and a brake nipple screwed inside there. And hopefully that will stop that leaking while we do this repair. We've capped that off, that's not leaking. Um, and we've moved the pipe down to below the level of this. So the brake fluid has drained out of there. It should allow us to drill that hole a little bit further. In the interests of science, what I've done is I've taken a brake union fitting, given it to a machine shop and asked them to make it round, to cut it in half and to put an M12 one thread on it, which is what this here is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as our insert for two reasons. The first reason is I just want to see if it's possible to take a brake union turn it in a lathe, put a thread on it, and whether that will work as a, um, an insert. And the second reason is that the insert that will fit in there will be the standard Mercedes brake bleed nipple or Brembo nipple um, that you would order if you put in this chassis number. So it's closer to OEM than this fitting here, which is a much thinner brake bleed nipple and not OEM and quite where you'd get one of those if you ever lost it or it, I don't know, rusted or snapped off, I don't know. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some red thread lock, glue that in, undo that fitting, see if it leaks, put the Mercedes brake bleed nipple in there, see if it's all leak free, and then buy myself a pint because I'll have deserved it, and then move on to fixing the transmission gasket leak on this car. To finish this job, we are going to glue in this little insert that I've had made up in a machine shop from a brake union fitting. We're going to glue it in using Loctite 638. Now this is a green compound and it's specifically developed to hold round things in tightly. So it's not like a thread locker, it's a glue that's high temperature, quite thick, so it's not going to run down the threads into the hole. Um, and that is the stuff that's been recommended by the machine shop. It's not particularly cheap. You can get this stuff on eBay for maybe £7.50. This we got from Anti-Friction Components in Bristol um, and is about £10 plus VAT, but they had it in stock. You do not need to go crazy when you put that in. You just need to make sure that you don't cross the threads when you screw it in. So I'm gonna screw that in by hand and then tighten it down with a socket. I'm not going to over tighten that. I do not want to risk stripping the threads out inside there. 
and um, we're going to leave that overnight and that should be ready for our brake bleed nipple video here we've finally managed to repair this brake caliper and um, we've managed to use OEM brake bleed nipples um, I'm going to do a separate video on how to bleed brakes the different methods this car is slightly special because it has the sensitonic brake controller SBC brake system but you can still bleed the front brakes in a, with a standard um, method so I'll show you how to do that in the next video I'm just going to finish with showing you where we got the various bits and pieces from that we used to fix this an excellent, almost foolproof way of getting seized brake nipples out before you shear them off is to get one of these flameless induction rods, 1000 watt one. This is the one we bought. We managed to find one for £149 on eBay. They're not cheap, but I can tell you from experience, if you shear off that brake bleed nipple, it can be an absolute nightmare to get it out. So it's an idea to try and heat it up without damaging the caliper before you actually shear it off. Um, this induction torch, which we've used for many other things as well, has been absolutely excellent. We got a set of these Minotaur bolt grip nut removers from Tool Station, and that worked really well with an impact wrench getting out the seized brake bleed nipple in conjunction with a bit of heat from that induction torch. If you do ever have to drill out a snapped off bolt, or in this case a brake bleed nipple, it's definitely worth trying a set of left hand drill bits. We got a set from eBay, £11.90 from these guys here, OPM Wales 1. We used Avon Tap and Die to get those taps. You could go along to eBay and get them substantially cheaper, but you really don't want to be using cheap taps when you're de drilling into something really expensive. If you snap off a cheap tap into a caliper or workpiece, my goodness me, it takes an awful lot of time to recover from. So these guys here, they just sell good quality engineered taps and that's why we use them. We got our M12-1 brake bleed nipple from these guys here, Addiction Motorsport on eBay, seven pounds, not cheap, but um, it is a great product sent out really quickly and it has the right profile at the end for a Mercedes. You can go along to these guys here Frentech UK and via eBay. They've got great customer service and actually get five of those M12 one brake bleed nipples for less than what we paid for one. But it is worth pointing out that the profile on these brake bleed nipples is different from the Addiction Motorsport one. And the Addiction Motorsport one is exactly the same as the Mercedes or the Brembo one, whereas this is a slightly different profile. Neither of them worked for us in the event, but I thought it's worth pointing that out. If you have damaged the seat of your bleed nipple whilst drilling it out, one solution is to go along to these guys here, Shaw Stainless on eBay, pay £23.95 and get a stainless steel insert with its own built-in um, bleed nipple and seat. This comes with an aluminium crush washer as well and that will pretty much sort out most problems. Now if you are going to be making an insert and gluing it in this is the stuff you need. Loctite 638 is specifically formulated for that and if you look at the specifications of that it's got a very high shear strength um, and it's also got good tolerance where you're going to get tolerance between the threads of any insert that you glue in. Don't be tempted just to use thread lock red or blue or something like that. This is the stuff you need here.